Hello, my name is Angelica and this is my oral presentation on private label branding. So to start out with the definition, I have two sources, first from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and secondly from the Business Dictionary. Now to start, private label, a private label associated with a specific chain store, a brand, or product having a private label. Alternatively, it's also a brand owned not by a manufacturer or producer, but by a retailer or supplier who gets its goods made by a contract manufacturer under its own label, also called private brand. Also to give a definition for branding, that is to give a name, term, sign, symbol, or design, or a combination of them intended to identify the goods or services of one seller or group of sellers and to differentiate them from those of others. Now, chain stores we're all familiar with. These can be categorized as Safeway, Save Mart, Food Max, Dollar Generals, Rayleigh's, and others who carry their own store brand lines. And I will elaborate on this further as we go throughout the presentation. So first, I'd like to briefly go over some examples of private label brands. Now here, I have some listed. You can see that I have Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, Ulta Brand Cosmetics, Sephora Brand Cosmetics, Kirkland, Tractor Supply, Cobalt, Clover Valley. Now, some of these may be familiar to you and some of them may not. As you can see over here, I have some of the images associated with the brands that I have on the left. I, some of the ones that I wanted to touch over briefly are Kirkland, for example, you might see Kirkland Signature, and that's considered Costco's generic version of some of the other products that they carry in their retail store. Cobalt is also exclusively to Lowe's, and that could be considered generic for some of the other tools that they carry within the store. And Clover Valley is Dollar General's version of many of the brand name products that they also carry. And this was just to give you an idea of some of the brands categorized as private labels. Speaking on the topic of brand names, that come it brings up the issue of brand name preference. Now, some people are simply loyal to their brand. Many people have preferences. For example, a person might be opposed to buying a store brand's version of a product like Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Now, while some of us may not care whether it's Kraft macaroni and cheese or macaroni and cheese, some people feel a loyalty to the Kraft brand or possibly feel that the opposing brand does not have the reputation or quality that, the, that they feel that Kraft has provided them. Therefore, there's an issue for the chain's grocery store brand. Typically, the grocery store brand is also not marketed individually, and so you don't see commercials for Kirkland's products. Rather, you see the commercials for the brand name products that they have in store and their product reputation has not necessarily yet been established and this can be considered an issue for the pr private brand labeling. Speaking on the trends in private land labeling, a strong focus on customer confidence, also building brand loyalty through portfolio optimization, collaboration between suppliers, manufacturers, designers, and marketers to elevate product quality innovation and in even bigger research towards excuse me, even bigger shift towards research. Now, trending in the market of private label branding is gaining the trust of the customer through quality assurance. Many private labels are building brand loyalty also through portfolio optimization. So by analyzing the inventory offered through the retailer and lining up where the corporation is standing and what customers are asking for, finding the point of entry and finding ways to compete with the national brand equivalent. And regarding the, the bottom two, they are always looking to improve their product and whether that's through design or supply, whether it's the manufacturer that they use, they're always looking to elevate the, the quality of their product to match that brand name and this obviously makes a shift towards research. Leading into conflicts, the conflict between the store and the other manufacturers. Now although I personally haven't seen much conflict in store brand retail research, I have seen in the research shown that it's possible for conflict between the retail manufacturer and the brand manufacturer. This means that the retailer demands that the priority of shipment be their private labels rather than other name brand manufacturers. And so this can obviously be a almost considered a conflict of interest in the business of private label branding. Now moving into the advantages talk a little bit about control over pricing and products. Now, when you market your own product, you have the control over your image, your price, your product. You can implement your own marketing strategy, creating a personalized image, 
as well as spanning various categories within your store. When you, you are, because you, this is all possible because you are the brand. Therefore, you can use your own inputs, your taglines, your logos. Now, as we mentioned before, these grocery store brands are not necessarily, these private label brands are not necessarily as heavily marketed. However, they do have some form of marketing. And many retailers are investing in building truly credible private brands within their portfolio and are being rewarded with market share year after year. And some of these brands um, are Target, Safeway, and Walmart. And we'll talk about some of their personal brands later on as well. Speaking on the disadvantages, however, higher brand, there is a higher risk involved with private label branding. And and that's because retailers have to build their own brand, which can be very can be a very daunting task, especially when we touch back on things like the loyalty that people have towards their product. And so this can be really difficult for them and could, could be considered a, a disadvantage. And also higher margin. And what I'm referring to the is is rather subjective, but it so it can be difficult for a retailer to calculate which products have the highest margin. But conversely, I mean high sales volume of lower margin can be more profitable. And so that could be considered a disadvantage for them. One thing I wanted to touch on is private label branding in the dairy industry. Now, for some of you this may be unfamiliar, I am an ag student. I do come from an agriculture background and a company that sticks out in my mind when I think about private label branding is Borden Golden Meadow Dairy Company. And this is home of the iconic cow Elsie which has been touting a private label since 1857. Originally a facility which produced evaporated milk, it swiftly became a household name with its variety of milks, cheeses, and ice cream. It holds a private label by not contributing to a local milk advisory board in which they provide their own marketing for their product. Now, to clarify, the Milk Advisory Board is an organization in which dairy farmers pay about 15 cents per milk check in order to have their products marketed. So this is where you see your beloved happy cows come from California. Now, Borden has been enormously successful in marketing their brands in the dairy industry. And most importantly, what I want you to take from this is the unique approach that Borden takes by not relying on an organization to market their products, but rather markets it themselves. Their milk cartons are vibrant in color, and I'd like you to just take a moment to look right here. You can see that they are very bright, the colors are vivid, and, and they really capture you um, as you're walking through the milk, the dairy aisle, if you will. And also some of the other things, they have their iconic Elsie the cow. She's been very popular and has lasted since 1857. And they do have a live version of Elsie, which is taken to local county fairs. One thing that I wanted to really put a lot of emphasis on is in their private label branding, the way that they have marketed themselves, is they've even reached out to, um, in this corner, it may, it's a very small picture, but this is Selena Gomez, and she's uh, very popular within the Disney Channel. And she has done a wonderful job marketing for Borden's Dairy, and they have through her they have really reached the younger audience and it, they've really been able to pull those children into uh, convincing their mom to purchase milk and and I think that that's really impressive to see what they the unique approach that they've taken by not relying on organizations to market their product they've really done an excellent job uh, private label branding in the dairy industry now to finish off this presentation, I just wanted to talk about a few of the private label brands in the agriculture industry. And now these are not specific to the agriculture industry, of course, but they are important because many of these products we do provide to this industry. And so I wanted to bring attention to things like Kirkland Signature. Now this again is Costco's brand. This is what you see when you go to Costco if you uh, purchase a generic or off-brand version of some of their products. We also have Rancher's Reserve, which is Safeway's version of uh, choice beef. We have Fresno State Meats, Dairy, Nuts, and Wines. I know that many of you may not be familiar with that, but they actually have their own brand of the products that they grow and sell off of their farm. We have Sunny Select, which is from Save Mart. That's a Save Mart brand, and also Great Value Groceries. And so we, all, we also have Target, which is the Market Pantry, and Lucerne, which belongs to Vons. And so you can see by all these labels, I'm sure that when you are shopping, you have seen these you may or may not choose to always to, to purchase these items, but I just want to bring attention that these are 
the store brand's private label branding. And so maybe you can think about that the next time you are in a grocery store and you see many of these brands above, you will recognize that these belonged, these are a part of private label brand marketing. And I just wanted to show you the works cited and these are the many websites and books that I received retrieved from the website from the internet excuse me and also from the CSU Stanislaus and MJC libraries and I want to thank you for watching my presentation.